My name is Steve Byrne. I am a uh, stand-up comedian. On a weekday, I'll do anywhere from like four to five shows a night. And then on a weekend, it could be anywhere from like four to eight or nine. If you hustle, you can do eight clubs. The most I've ever done was eight. Yeah, but I can't do that anymore. I guess an average number on a weekend would be six. Five to six for me. We have done nine a bunch of times. Somebody had ten scheduled, but they only made nine of them. They got stuck in traffic. The most I ever heard was 11. To do 12 would be great. To do 13 would be really cool. Do 13 shows in one night. That's, it's, it's a tough thing to do. And this is the only city you can do it in. You can never do 13 shows as a comedian anywhere else other than New York City. most I ever did, I think, was 11 in one night, and then I was just like, well, you know what, I just want to find out what the most is, and push myself to the limit, I guess. Hey, Bobby, it's Steve, how are you? Listen, I just want to ask you, like, what, what is the most number of sets you know that somebody did in, uh, in the city, in, in one night? 12? We have to do more than 12. That means we have to do 13. 13. Or bust. Delilah, it's Steve Byrne, how are you? Good, good, yeah. I was just calling to confirm my 950. I was just calling to confirm my spots at Ha Saturday for the uh, 720 and 740. By 1240, my 1155 and 650, and then the second one at 1035. 120, I have the 845 and the 915. My 1110, my 210. 13 in one night, I believe it can be done. I think it can be done. We have the schedule that says it can be done, it's possible, it's just, Nothing can go wrong. There's a hundred different variables that go into something like this because it's not just about me, it's about 11 different clubs, six other comedians on each show, and you pray to God that all those things all work in your favor and everything runs according to plan. So, as long as I stick to my plan and all those other comics and all those other comedy clubs stick to their plan, then this should work out and uh, we can beat the record in New York. Right now, this is the first First show, we're going up to the uh, comic strip. It's on the Upper East Side of the city. This is a club that's uh, known for a lot of guys starting off out there, like Seinfeld, Eddie Murphy. It's it's like it's a club with a lot of history. What can we expect tonight? A lot of running around, a lot of drunk people. It's the holidays. A lot of fun. It'll be cool. But this is gonna go by quick. But here it is. Here's our first show. Here we go. This is my headshot over here. I'll show you. When I was like, like as a comic, when you're first starting off, you want to pass here. You want to pass the comic strip, you know? When you first start, you, you move to the city, more. you're doing crappy gigs. Then you move to the clubs on weekends. Then you move to outside clubs, like, you know, f featuring, middling. And then you move to colleges. You start doing colleges. And then you move to headlining clubs. When you start headlining clubs, you're not making money. Like, none of us are famous. Like, you know, whoever, like a Chris Rock or whatever. But we'll make good money and we'll get taken care of. There's no way to make this business. There'll be a guy who's been doing it way longer than you finally get something. Or oh, there'll be a guy who's been doing it for a couple weeks and you're thinking he's back here. Next thing you're sitting at home, you see him, you know, he got a part on like a sitcom. It's just like no... You can't, uh, yeah, you can't ever, you can't ever look at that. You know, you've... You just gotta do your thing. And and in some ways, I mean, in terms of the odds and probability, you're lucky to make it there. Most comics, most people don't make it, do, do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Most guys, there's literally 300 guys. I mean, you know, every fucking weirdo, plate spinner, whack job, delusional animal from, you know, the Four Corners is there auditioning, but they, they show up different yeah. year after year. And they usually put you up after somebody who's gonna kill. That's the boss. That's, that's, that's the seller. The seller. The seller yeah. She'll put you up, and they both, they'll watch you. And then while, you know, they'll sit there. And then you'll do five minutes. And if you do good, you might, you'll get the thumbs up. If and you most don't, you get never ignored. Pass there. Most people never pass Most people never get an audition. Yeah. yeah. You never get an audition. Yeah, I, I gave her my tape, because you got to give her a tape. I gave her my tape, and it took eight months for her to even yeah, yeah, yeah. look at it. And then she <laughs> called me. You do these shows at night so that you can go on Jimmy Kimmel, or you can go on Conan, or Letterman, or Leno, and do well. You know, this is what all that is for. <laughs> Any other Asians here tonight at all? Any Asians? I repeat, any Asians? 
Of course not. They're all studying. God bless us. It's good to hear. It's good. Hear that, people? How do I do that? How on God's green earth do I make noises when I move? Well, let me explain it to you. See, I'm Asian, you're not. That's how. I feel bad for Asian actors. That's what I feel bad for. Asian actors can't even get cast in movies about Asians. You know, do you remember The Karate Kid starring Ralph Macchio? Did they say Ralph? Now you got The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise. What the fuck is going on? It's like, what's next? The Jackie Chan story. A movie about the life of Jackie Chan. An Asian starring Emilio Estevez. Steve, you're very talented. Shut up, That was all right. These next two will be uh, similar to that. This club is a little more kind of condensed. This is usually tourists from all over the world, you know, because this is right by Times Square. How are you? There's another club right upstairs. One other room. So we'll just do this one. And then, literally, by the time I finish this one, he'll be right upstairs to bring me up. And then we'll do that one, and we'll run over Caroline. I love being with my mom. There's one time I don't like being with my mom. It's in church. You know? Because she thinks she's a good singer. What's <laughs> 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 not the Miss Elisha? Much how the church here is too. It was a good thing. Scoot down the pew, scoot down. Pray for Yoko, scoot down. We're going upstairs right now. We could do the same exact set. Well, some crowds aren't that hot on what's going on, and, yeah. and some love it. I hate those restaurants. That'll be as funny as Chili's out back. They all stink. I was trying to create this party atmosphere like you walk in, like, hey, we stink with a slit in the wall. We're crazy here. Thank you. That was fucking horrible. Now we're running off to Caroline's. Got 10 minutes. Ray, how you doing? It's Steve Byrne. How's it going? I got cut off from you a second ago, but I'm just letting you know I'm right around the corner. I'm doing like a five minute guest spot at 8 o'clock. Yeah, just let them know I'll be there in like a... <laughs> uh, just, I, I'll just be, I was just letting you know I'll be there definitely by 8 o'clock, okay? Okay, bye. I like where it's just like on the go. You just gotta run over there. There's a Times Square moment here. I think comics get chicks if they want to, if they pursue it, you know? But I mean, you're essentially up on stage for 20 minutes in front of, you know, on a weekend, 300, 200 people. You're the life of the party. You made everybody laugh. And there's going to be girls that are attracted to that, you know? And then they come up to you afterwards. And, or some guy sit at a bar by the exit door waiting to be like, hey, oh, oh, oh thanks, you know? But I don't know. It's like, I know in the back of my mind that if I went into a bar and approached that girl, she wouldn't give me the time of day. So I keep that in the back of my head, and I, you know, it's like I know half these girls wouldn't even talk to me. You know what? Rock and roll guys get a lot of tail. We, you know, comics. You know, it's you usually, like you were so funny. Oh my god, huh? This is my boyfriend. That's usually what you get. No, you know what's funny? It's no, that's you, not you, true. You still, you still you have bang to, a lot. You still have to work though. <laughs> the, this is a big thing that they say. They say like musicians. Not like rock stars, but you bang a lot. No, but even like musicians, if you're like at an open mic, I mean, the, as far as like the stereotype goes, it's like, you know, you know, you strum a couple of chords and you're going to have a couple of groupies. Comedians, even when you kill, you still have to work it afterwards because what sucks is they saw you kill and then they think you're going to be that funny the whole fucking time, which is impossible yeah. and totally unnatural to sustain. And if you actually try to do it, you just come off as irritating. So yes. it's, a, it's a weird thing where it's you're not starting off at ground yeah, zero. Yeah, you know, you're not... You're not, what are you guys funny? Anybody. You get yeah, I thought you were funny. No one's complaining. No one's complaining. We're being honest. Uh, uh, fucking dude, he's just saying asshole. that. <laughs> oh, I'm the negative one. <laughs> I'm just sending it back at you. Send it's the spiritual you world. You get, you get back what you put dude, out. Dude, he's just saying that. 
<coughs> most girls think that you're going to be that guy. Right, right. I get all the time. Yeah. Like, you're going to come off stage and be like, so you want to get a yeah. CD case? <laughs> but you don't. It's not funny to anybody because I don't know what you're talking about. It's funny to us. I'm sure they'll bust. Yeah, you know what? The show was good, yo. Good show. Oh, that show was fun, yeah. That was a nice one. Yeah, maybe we can get laid out of this, huh? How's it going? Airlines, uh, it's a great club. It's a headlining club. It will be sold out of probably 300 some people. Uh, this will be a really nice one. This is one where, as opposed to the last three, I won't really joke around as much. I'll just kind of bang it out. But it's only five minutes as well, so. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to entertaining you all. <laughs> what are you, a pilot? <laughs> no, sir. That will be enough out of you. There's nothing worse than, like, doing your act in front of a sold-out Saturday night show at Caroline's. And as soon as you get up, some jackass wants to be a part of your show. Did you hear me? Excuse me. What did you say? I just didn't handle it well, though. Talk to Daddy. <laughs> Do you want to say something? I was handling it like there was, like, 15 people in a club. It's a sold-out show, and here I am wasting my time talking to some, you know, some jackass and nobody knows what the hell is going on and in five minutes if I had 15 minutes that's different but I got five minutes so by the time I start even digging myself out of the hole it's too late we got uh nine more to go eight more to go I don't know so it'll be an afterthought by the end of the evening here we go uh I'm actually right on the dot I'll see this one starting now, so I'm gonna go. I don't know if we have time yet. I'm gonna go here, here, and then boom. Now, there's two types of tapes people get to work on themselves. You got your workout tapes like John Basedow, and you got your porno tapes, right? <laughs> now, what does it say about us when we're willing to dedicate less time to our workouts, but more time to a porno? For example, five minute abs, easy, easy, please. Ten minute buns of steel, don't push it, please. But you can endure two and a half hours of facial humiliation. Ah, ah, more, ah, ah. I thought you were done. Seriously. Oh. <laughs> 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 Porn's become a more mainstream. I think they just need to soften it up a bit, you know, throw in some nice touches. I came up with an idea, you know? You show the couple going every which way, the oral, the oral, blah, 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 and then you show the guy, then you show that same couple at the end, together, holding a baby. Hey, nice job. You really know how to take a pounding, Angel. We're gonna go on this one next. And, uh, you know, witness the magic. Thanks again. Steve Burn! Uh, good evening. Wow. This is hot. Hot, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of energy in this room. And honestly, like, it doesn't get worse than that. What could be worse than that? I go and do this gig, which, it's a college gig, outside, in the rain, <laughs> underneath an awning. They're 40 feet away from me underneath an awning, at a beer fest, after a band, with a skydiving simulator next to me. <laughs> and not to mention the guy that goes by with the funnel every 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I pull it off. All right, people, we gotta wrap this up here. I gotta listen. Once you get momentum going, you can't stop it. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a conductor of comedy, people. All aboard. Next stop, last spell. Ha ha. <laughs> it's like there's some guys that will go into a situation like that and let the environment really get to them and be like, "Fuck, this sucks." There's times where I still do this, and I, I mean, I do it every night, and I see somebody smiling, and I know that they're paying money to be there. You gotta do your best for them, you know. It's tough though, the situation like that. It's just that's a horrible room to do comedy in, but it's like that's just one other room in the city that you could do. It was gonna be this, you know, college gig with a thousand people. Turned out there were thirty Hasidic <laughs> students in a room, and they didn't use a microphone because it was on the Sabbath day, so there was no technology allowed. So I had to stand on top of a radiator and harangue <laughs> a bunch of Hasids for forty minutes, and it was, uh, it was harangue. Hard. 
I had to harangue these people because you have to yell. You go through the dictionary every day and try to pick out interesting. No, words I'm relatively literate different. because I've read. I need to be fu made fun of. Yeah, because I'm not an illiterate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he completed grade school. He said a radiator. <laughs> you want to bash him you in the see that? No, I liked it. I thought it worked good radiator. with his character. Really? Yeah. With what character? Hey, I say radiator. How's color your color schedule rain? next week? Are you open, you <laughs> freaking moron? It's our job to make other people laugh. And, you know, we sit around waiting to go on, making each other laugh as well. So it's it's just nice hanging out with these guys. It's a lot of fun. I haven't had this, this type of friendship since high school. Hanging out and shooting the shit and doing comedy shows and eating food and... It's because we're time really it makes together me... every night. Yeah. Yeah, but the only time... So it is like high school. Dude, you're filming a bunch of four humps, okay? Why? Because oh. we do comedy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Steve Byrne. Yeah. Rocking it out. Good to be here. I feel like I'm on a cruise ship. <laughs> Steve Byrne, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! That was, uh, that was interesting. I wouldn't even know how else to describe that one. Other than, what the fuck was that? Look down here. How you doing, sir? Going to uh, 82nd and 2nd. This is like going to be the fun part of the night, I think, these next two. If these late shows are packed, if the later shows are packed, then it's going to be a lot of fun, you know? We kind of got the ones that are a little more vacant out of the way and the early ones, so this will be cool now. This is the glamorous backstage. Thanks, Al. I'm actually uh, Korean and Irish. I'm Caucasian and Asian, which makes me Caucasian. <laughs> it makes you feel good. Yeah. yeah. You feel so good. good. You walk out and you go, dude, I finally, I, I did my act the way I wanted it to be done, and they got it, and they fucking got it. Every 30 seconds, they fucking laugh wherever the fuck I wanted to, and it built, and I said thank you, and they went, wah, and they applauded, because they didn't know what else the hell to do. I don't care who you are. That makes you feel yeah, like, man, good. that's a fucking drug, and you'll stay up all night, all night with that shit. All night. And you just have the audience in the palm of your hand. You could, you, you, it's like, there's some nights you could virtually say anything, and it's just like, for some reason, they're just with you. I like watching uh, Bruce Lee movies. Kung Fu movies. I never felt bad for guys that fought Bruce Lee. I always felt bad for Linda Lee, Bruce Lee's wife, because she had sex with this guy night after night after night. So here's my take on sex in the Bruce Lee household. Excuse me. Your honey. And you would like to make love to me all evening long? No problem, bring it on. I am properly trained. I'm so sorry. I, I make him feel good. It's addictive in the sense that, look it, I'll work every night, I'll be on the road, I'll be up all night, I'll be flying in and out, I'll come back and I'll still put in a veil for Friday and Saturday night and I'll take Sunday off and I'll feel fucked up when I'm home because I don't want to be home, I want to be down the club because I feel like somebody's getting on or somebody's doing something or I could be on and you get that instant gratification every 30 seconds, boom, 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 and when you're done you get you a freaking great by a couple people and then you go home and you feel fucked, it's a drug, you know what I mean, it's a drug. All right, I gotta go. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Enjoy your evening. Happy holidays. 
Doing a show like that is so nice. You're like, wow, that was fun. It's almost like I should pay the club for letting me do that. You know, not the other way around. I was seeing this girl and I came home. I did a spot at the strip and like during the week they'd literally pay you like eight bucks. Eight dollars. It's like fucking insulting. It's ten. five dollars after ten thirty. Something oh, really? like that. So yeah, I get like eight ridiculous. bucks. I come home and I did some new bit and it worked and I was psyched. I was like bouncing off the walls and she kind of got like depressed for a second looking at me and I was like, what's the matter? She goes, I want a job like your job where even if I get paid eight bucks, I'm still like, like excited as hell. Now we are going to Dangerfields to uh, the oldest club in Manhattan. And here we are with eight minutes to spare. Girls like the guy. Every girl likes the guy. The guy's in trouble. Let's face it. Most girls can dance. Most guys cannot. Because if you're on the dance floor, if you're not gay or black, drink as much liquor as you possibly, possibly can. You still look stupid, but you won't feel it. Because the girl's not going to turn around. Hey, you want to dance with me? No, she's going to move. Now you're going to keep up. Now you may have gotten yourself in a situation you cannot handle. Oh, fuck. There's the guy. There's all the Oh, of course. He's cute. He's cute. Back up. Back up. Stop looking. Stop looking. <laughs> the guy's in the back trying to keep up like he's at a rodeo. <laughs> DJ said to me, eight seconds, how long can tell him he ain't so much? Well, that's a chat sex night, Tommy. Jesus. Keep it! Come on, give me a hand! That was fun. Get some time. How awesome would it be if that was for us, you know? <laughs> I gotta get in a fucking cab. Whew. It's like midnight. We've done uh, nine shows, and uh, we've got four left. We just finished at Dangerfields. We're heading over to Stand Up New York. Are you guys sick of Steve and his awful jokes yet? I mean, eight fucking times <laughs> at this point, no? <laughs> These, that's why these guys have jobs in this business. They gotta yeah. kiss an ass. Right. Exactly. I feel sorry for them. I tried to mix it up as much as I can, but it's still. Like, well, you got a whole other hour to go to. I it's, do. The same, it's the same bullshit material. I, I told them I probably have. It's I did the Bruce bullshit. Lee once this whole evening. No, you didn't. Yeah. How many times have I done that Bruce Lee thing? The comic strip. He you said motherfucker. Three. He said I did three not do times. it three times. Exactly. That is not true. Of course you did. He's a, he has a heavy fear of intimacy, as do most uh, Five you, seconds of your, before your big people. Four. <laughs> and I believe the correlation between intimacy <laughs> and dysfunction yeah. uh, is a direct one. It's distinct, and the reasons Why are... Why don't you use the word uh, uh, well, I don't even know. Fuck it. Yeah, well, yeah, he was about to say a word that he had no idea to use, so he cut himself off. I've learned one thing. One thing out of doing comedy this long. I have no friends. What? what are you talking about? No, 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 about? Don't, don't even buy that. You know what, that, that's don't. like the dude who always threatens to commit suicide and he's <laughs> not going to do it. He just wants to hear how much we like him. Fuck you, Bobby. Yeah. That was like terrible. Him. Oh, yeah, like Bobby has lots of friends. He's very popular. He grew up in a way that I would imagine is horribly dysfunctional and he's scarred for life. So his, his you know, his reactions to everything and his observations are informed by his vicious dysfunction. Why does everything sound like a self-help book coming out of your mouth? It's not self-help. I'm merely a... Uh, Am I lying? Opinion. I think you're a good guy, and I like you, and uh, you're a little out of your mind, and those are the reasons why. Yeah, you, <laughs> I'm you not mean, saying don't... I'm any different, I'm just saying that... Isn't everything about trying to find a way to exist until exist in an optimal way, and that, that feels relatively fulfilling until you drop dead? I mean, isn't that what life is, what we're all doing, Wow. Right? Can, I, can you make that a fucking two-shot, like I'm not in that? I really can't be sick. Yeah, can you send that. it to me and put it in a frame? No, I never knew it you wasn't had this. You know what I'm going to buy you? I'm going to buy you a harp. You need like a harp with some shit like this? What the fuck was that? I read, I read a lot of philosophy, and, and the things got Apparently very Apparently you want us to know that. my TV back on. I don't want you to know that. It's just that I don't tell you, you won't we... infer it because yeah, you, you can't understand yeah, but, the words. But you're doing, using. stop trying to intimidate us yeah, with infer. Dummy. Everybody I'm looks not like intimidating. You are my, now you're on my and, side. And he, and he's sitting there. Oh, you know what jump. I did? I liked That's him. That's an oxymoron. Like you called him no. a dummy. Yeah, well, I don't usually work with Dove, you know, so I didn't I didn't realize what a, what a fucking pontificating job. I don't Yes, you do. 
You really, are I'm trying an to irritating. communicate something. Shut I'm up. not at all. He's really trying to come he off. He really like, puts big words. You know, in what, you know what he's trying to be? He's trying to be the guy who you didn't get into this business me. to be famous and to fill up that fucking void inside him. He's trying to be like, uh, what is? He should yeah, smoke his cigarettes like this. He lives. He lives in the East Village. He grew up on a friggin' India on a friggin' commune. He's trying to be. He's trying to be interesting. He wears his shirts inside out because of hey. We He's just awful. calling you for being full You know what he is? I don't, He's a thin-headed friggin' about. dummy. Okay, that's all he is. <laughs> He's a he does dick yeah. jokes and he throws big words in it to make it sound like he's smart and intelligent. No, no, no. Then he talks with, like, bongos in yeah. the background. Yeah, exactly. When people, when guy, people they don't not. applaud for him, they do yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Friggin' jerk that's off. Fun. Don't ask him no more questions. Bobby likes me. I do uh, love Dove a lot. You can't call another co-worker Merrill Lynch a pussy or, or a, a big ape. Or, you know, you can't just be demeaning. Like, this this environment, guys are just downright mean to each other. But it's hilarious. Have you yeah, seen his little stuff. fucking Asian act? Girls are different. They're guys all, are they're, different. They're all very <laughs> I mean, how about it for Frank, everybody, huh? You gotta. You gotta. You know what I mean? You gotta do it. I was watching extreme television the other night. Oh, fucks. Fucks. I was watching extreme television. I started laughing. Because I saw this dude on fire. I started laughing. Because, like, honestly, what is the first thing you learn to do if you ever catch fire? Stop dropping off. What are these idiots always doing? Running. running. What are you running from? It's on you. <laughs> Dude, where are you going? I'm going to outrun fire. <laughs> no, you're not. Keep burning, everybody. One more time. I, I should call Gotham and just let him know I'm going to be there probably right on time. Hey, how's it going? It's Steve Byrne. How you doing? So, uh, you guys know that Ben and I switch, right? Ben, ben Bailey, yeah, uh, he's got the 1255. I'm doing the 110. Is he, are, is he there now? And this is it. This is going to be bad, dude. Usually, these late shows at Gotham, I'll tell you, I either do really well or I bomb, like, badly. I want to stay here all night and talk to you people, make comedic love to you all night long. <laughs> I can't help myself. That's right, Angel. I gotta take this party train on downtown. I got another ha 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 to hit. I heard you ate your balls in there. Yeah, I did. Really? I heard you ate them really bad. Yeah, a few places. How did that feel? I'll see you guys. Hey, Steve, stick with it. Shut up, Bill. If I bomb, I don't give a fuck. I mean, I've, I've, you, once you've done it long enough, it's, it's in the beginning that it kills because you don't know am I good at this yeah. am I going to be able to do this so when you bomb it's really like fuck man maybe maybe I'm that guy maybe I'm that guy that guy who sucks you know like I did, I did a gig one time and literally I mean no laughs I was hosting a show nothing went up did five minutes brought up the, got nothing brought up the middle act he kind of did okay I went up again five more minutes nothing it was so bad I literally ran out the back of the club <laughs> Because I didn't want to hear what people had to say, and this couple was walking by, and I knew I shouldn't have listened, but I had to. It was kind of an okay show, and the, and the girl was like, is it usually like that? And the guy's like, no, it's usually funny, man, you know? And he's like, man, that redhead guy sucked. And I was just like, ah. I had to go back to my J job. It was like eight days between my next, sh next show, and I had to carry that in my head. Oh, that was horrible. As long as the majority of the time... I'd say like 80, 90, 95% of the time you're doing really well, then you should be doing this. But, you know, I mean, you're going to have to off nights. It happens. Hey, it's Steve Byrne. I'm just telling you that I'm right around the corner, okay? Yeah. I'm going to be there in less than a minute. That fucking idiot. That fucking idiot totally took us the wrong fucking way. Check this. Give up for the very funny and very talented Mr. Stephen Byrne. Come on, give it to him! Yeah, I love macaroni and cheese. My favorite part of the meal isn't even eating it. How weird is that? It's preparing it. Do this the next time you're bold. Take a spoon, dip it in your pasta, and just stir it. Here's the trick. Don't eat it. Just listen. You appreciate your meal that much more when you eat it. Take a spoon, just... I gotta stop because I'm getting hungry, yeah. I really do. 
I think everybody likes the mac and cheese. I'll tell you who loves it. My next door neighbor. Yeah, she had a bowl last night at one in the morning for an hour and 17 goddamn minutes. I know, because I have my ear up against the wall, and all night long, all I hear... So good. So good. Eat it. Eat it. I ran next door. I was like, hey, don't eat so fast. You're going to choke. You know my favorite part about that joke is so many ladies over the next night or two, next time you hear. For one brief shining moment, guess whose smiling face can appear in your little heads? Me. Steve Barnes, ladies and gentlemen, if you open the corner selling macaroni and cheese. Man. Tony, what, what the? Oh my God. Is this Steve Barnes, is that Tony guy, Woods. favorite comedian? God bless you. Is this like a Good comedian to see you. thing? Uh, can I get on your shit like, uh, not like, really. like, 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 like Orny Adams was on Seinfeld? I it's, look stupid. It's just not like, like that. Did. Watching a friend set, it's fun, but it's like, especially on the weekends, like, like he's not gonna try out new stuff. You know, he's gonna do his his old stuff. So, you know, we all know each other's acts pretty well. You could, I could play putting on the hits with it. They never send a white reporter to the ghetto. I was in a helicopter <laughs> above the ghetto, yeah. looking down, scared, like. <laughs> Okay, from up here! Oh shit, no, go a little higher, they can jump. <laughs> Y'all ready for more show? Put your hands together. I like to nail them on that one. I hope he never sees that. This next man comes to the stage, you can see them on Tough Crowd with Cops. Yeah, like Bible say nice things like, you blow, or you <laughs> suck cock. No, dummy, seriously. We know each other's acts. We don't, you know what it is? Some people do that, some comics will do that, but guys like us, we'll watch each other, and you know what? We'll fuck with each other. If somebody's doing something, you know, that's kind of stupid, we'll be like, dude, right, you're yeah, fucking... Yeah. And to get them, fuck with them, but to have them stop doing it in a right. cool way. Yeah. And then when they do something good, it's like, dude, that's a good joke. And yeah. it, But it's almost like, you know, you don't want to come up all the time, dude, that's great, I'm working on this, I'm working... Because then it's like annoying and fake. But if I, he comes up to me and says, dude, that joke's cool, I know he means it, and it's kind of like, oh, cool, I know that's cool. Plus, yeah. it, there's like an etiquette where if you're friends with yeah. the person, if you're tight with them, then you can come up and say something to them. But there's yeah. nothing more irritating is if you do that to somebody somebody you don't even know yeah. comes up to you and starts critiquing your act especially yeah. if they suck too it's just like dude why don't you go work on your own yeah. fucking yeah. horror so the last one last one gentlemen if you're in this business about trying to get money or people well, to there's, yeah, and that's all you're there's about there's nothing you're wrong with yourself. fame you're gonna kill there's yourself. nothing wrong with fame there's nothing wrong with a lot of things but if that's the objective then right. you're, you're gonna be in you're just going to be a miserable guy. When Bobby gets his t TV show and it becomes famous, he's going to realize that it's hollow, just like every other famous person Dude, does. Dude, it's not... And if you can still have fun with it, no. Because right, it's got to be... You're absolutely so right, Duff. But you know what? You're absolutely you know what? right. But you know it's what? about that's having that's fun, fun now. That's and enjoying your, your fame now. Not everybody says but that. But it's he's not... not it's it. not about... Dude, it's not... It's not bad. Money's not bad. To be rich isn't bad. That fame isn't bad. But you know what? You're absolutely right. You have to enjoy what we're doing right now. Absolutely. And I do. Absolutely. I'm not trying to become famous. I'm trying to get on stage and do my comedy. The more poundings you get, the more rejection you get, the more tough skin you get, the, the closer you get to who you are, because you have no choice to what you'll accept and what you won't accept. Yeah. And then that gets you closer to your comedy, because then you start being more honest in everyday life with people you interact with. And then when something goes down, okay, when you finally get your opportunity, you're not going to accept crap. You know, except, you know, something they give you that is, goes against your character or what you are. You're going to go, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Because you're happy with what you're doing anyways. That's one thing we all have. We're happy now. So whatever you give us is bonus. One of my personal favorites, give it up. Make it motherfucking loud. Steve Burns! Steve There's some ladies here. Goes like this cold weather. Like when it's kind of cold out. Goes like it. Because I get to lie down to this. Come here. Let's keep each other warm. Let's keep each other warm. I have a blanket that'll keep me warm. You know? I sleep like the Heisman Trophy like this. I love it. Because I get to lay down at night and do this. Come here. Oh, so tired. So 
I'm exhausted from just swallowing my mouth all day. I'm just looking at nobody, 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 nobody's even in the room right now. I'm just talking to myself. Talking. Hey, what's going on? Nothing, just relaxing. Come here and relax with me. Yeah, man. We relax together. <laughs> Stop rubbing that. Stop touching this. I just said I'm relaxing. My God, you're like an animal. Can you just spoon? Can you do that? Can you just spoon? You want me to go get you a spoon? No, I don't want you to get me a spoon. I want you to become a spoon. Can you do that? Can you become a spoon? What the fuck are you talking about? Become a spoon. See how I'm laying? I'm a spoon. I bet. You become a spoon. We'll be overlapping spoons. Okay, I have a puzzle piece. Here's the puzzle. You figure out where you fit. Oh, you want me to lay like a retard like that as well? Yeah. That's a great attitude for relaxing. That's wonderful. Oh. Now tickle my arm. There you go. Tickle. Yes, tickle my arm. All right, there you go. <laughs> Don't tickle me. Just tickle me. What the fuck are you talking about? Become a tickling spoon? Just tickle me. Just take your fingertips and run them smoothly along the skin of my arm. Just touch me, but don't touch me. Can you do that? Can you just touch me, but not touch me? You know I can go to the bathroom and just touch me. I can do that, okay? And I shall. Thirteen? One night? That's pretty cool. Everything worked out, you know? The cabs, the time. Went by quick. I think Steve broke the record. That's not true. Would you do 13? That's, that's true. I'd never heard of anybody doing more. Why is this stupid? We're filming. He orders a can't fish help plate. What a moron. Fucking hungry. He's you order hungry. a drink. Haven't fish. you ever seen a documentary before? Is this a one-man show, you asshole? You see, as soon as I try and answer a no, question no. in a substantial way, this illiterate jumps in. <laughs> I have no problem with being illiterate. To his but dumb it down so I can hear you. And his New York sweatshirt. Dude. The guy's a walking billboard. You can't listen to people with labels all over their clothes. Dude, I can't understand. Nobody here has a label. Dumb it down, stupid. All right. Stop using your illicit and all these big fucking words. Just I didn't say what you're saying. By the way, that was an oxymoronic statement. Because you told me to dumb it down at the same time you called me stupid. What I'm trying to say is this gentleman is out of order. He's out of order. <laughs> Are you done? Could have done 15.